All right, we are live. Let's go. Are you guys are you guys ready for Axe Battler, a legend of Golden Axe? It's a Zelda 2 clone on the Game Gear in the Golden Axe universe. Uh, I have some help with, with commentary. I have the world record holder in this game, uh, J question mark. So thanks for joining me here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I love talking about this game. Uh, I always hope that I'll convince more people to come play it. Um, I mean, you already liked this game, so it hasn't really worked yet, but maybe someday. Someday, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we need to have some sort of nostalgia for this game. I don't know. We're going to skip past all of the lore. It's fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's a fun game um, to stum stumble around in blindly. It was actually given out in a bad games a blind racing tournament called Cuso Grande. Um, and some people actually, I think, got the bomb and even may have gotten the crystal in an hour. So that's, that's pretty good. Oh, wow. That is it's quite that's good. That's not bad for casual blind play. Yeah. That's, that's fun. Anyway, so this is uh, this is a very all right. So we're on the new game screen. Uh, we'll have we'll have time to talk about stuff. It's it's like a thirty-ish minute run. So uh, I'll let uh, J question mark do a lot of the heavy lifting commentary wise, and I will hope for good RNG. Have a day. All right. So we will uh, start here in three, two, one, go. I'm gonna mash. All right. So uh, it's worth noting for getting to the text on this game. The This can be a little bit scary at times when you use death warps, because there is the very small chance you'll pick up your computer and take it out of the game entirely. But uh, for all other text, it's really nice because this text scrolls pretty darn slow even with the button held down, and you wind up with text boxes a lot. Uh, so you'll notice that for getting random encounters, they are almost fighting game encounters. A nervous tick. Yeah. Commentary is very quiet. All right, I can I can boost him a little more. Oh, that's interesting. I tend to talk pretty quiet. The the kiddos in bed, so yeah, I get that. The tone down. All right. I'll, uh, after after this uh, after this dungeon, we'll get your turn. Cool. So RNG is uh, interesting in that sense. It matters for when you get. same way based on your position, your timing, so um, there's a lot of capacity to do really well and have the run go really smoothly. Unfortunately, a lot of that positioning and timing to make things happen the same way is very, very tight, so it's pretty heartless. So, Act Babbler just got a bomb. Um, this game is primarily... Ooh, that's rough to the <laughs> Very good RNG so far. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. The, uh... Wow. Just wow. Uh, so, the progression in this game is primarily gated by two different things. There's the items that you get, uh, such as the bomb, which we'll be using shortly, and the, uh, actual special abilities that you learn, which we'll be seeing in just a little bit. So the magic vases um, both function as currency and fuel for your magic. Yeah, it's mana. Uh, <clears throat> you, you are able to do magic attacks. Um, the magic attacks make the screen flash. Oh so yes. Not... Warning. Can you? Yeah. Can someone get like a warning flash, like on like a text or something? Because there is some there's some flashing in this game for sure. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it's uh, it gets a little rough when it comes up. Um, but that's only really useful in a couple spots. Uh, generally the magic is pretty, pretty slow and non-ideal, so, uh, it's avoided. The vases get used for healing it in when not, uh, uh, just using death warts, which are much nicer. Um, so encounters are generally random, 
Also, I love that you can throw the bomb backwards because cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> um, the encounters are random except for bridges. Encounters always happen on bridges. And I guess in dojos, because you go to the training hall to, to train. And of course, to train, you have to beat a random enemy. Neo Bar. That's our first Neo Bar, That's... but it won't be our last. Yeah. <laughs> one, one can dream of a world without tons and tons of random encounters. So now we have the high jump power. Uh, this makes it possible to complete basically everywhere other than that very first cave. I, I don't know if there's anywhere you can actually get through without the high jump other than that cave. Mm, don't think so. I think you can high jump everywhere else. So, uh, high jump's great. Um, jumping at the end of every fight is traditional. It just feels real good. There you go. That's, uh, what jump, that's what high jump does. Fun little lore note. Uh, that town where high jump is learned is Firewood Town. Uh, the castle that you begin the game in is Firewood Castle. So, theoretically, the town is directly associated with the castle that is across two bridges and on the other side of a bomb bombable mountain that has to be destroyed to get there. So, it seems weird, but, you know, whatever, that's, that's cool. That's how we do it. You're just getting hammered with these encounters. Yeah, it's been, it's been, this is, I would say, worse than normal in terms of, uh, in terms of RNG. Nothing, like, a catastrophic, but pretty bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> also, I, I'd like to know that we can't buy power-ups anywhere, that you don't get a new sword, you don't get a better sword, you don't get anything, you just have to train for ability. Just training uh, and just items that you find in dungeons. So this training hall is going to give a really, really excellent ability. Well, kind of until it becomes obsolete. Uh, the upper swing. So upper swing is wonderful because you can crouch and it deals extra damage. Uh, upper swing is terrible because the hitbox is really garbage on it. And I, I want to say it's slower than the normal sword swing too. But I don't know if that's true or not. It feels worse. <laughs> I, I I always feel like the hit that the hit radius on upper swing is worse than any other swing in the game. Like yeah, regular it, swing, super swing, none of it. It's not good. Um, Axe is his given name. Uh, and it's, he, yeah, good. yeah, he, he he's fighting to save the golden axe. So I don't know. Just just roll with it. It's it's, it's yes, the name of the barbarian in, in like the Golden Axe games. It's actually his name in the games in those games too, and he also has a sword in yeah. those games. So <laughs> it just never makes sense across the entirety of the lore of the, of the canon of this, this game. It's series. a family name. <laughs> <laughs> his grandfather used an axe, and it got kind of got stuck with the name. So uh, yeah, Axe Battler is out trying to save the world. Um, that last time we were in, there are a couple. Uh, enemies that, well, not enemies, sorry, uh, NPCs that we don't really see in the speedrun that are the chicken leg enemies from Golden Axe, one of the relatively few direct ties to the series. Um, one of them talks and tells you about this tower. There's really nowhere else to go, so uh, you could probably find this place regardless, but, it's... you know, if you don't. It's the uh, it's the chicken. It's the one all the way in the far corner. Of, I actually tested this out, and it's the one all the way in the far corner, uh, the top right corner of the of the town. It tells you, hey, go east. Like it's really obvious. It's really good. I like the embassies in this game. I found a few locations. Oh good. Near you. Oh good. <laughs> oh good, good, good. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, oh, I'm getting doxxed by my own Google Home. Wow. Hey Google, stop. Amazing. <laughs> That is, that is incredible. <laughs> I got super docs there. That was really good. I don't actually um, care. So jumping enemy there that you just took out. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done it, but if you time it just right, you can accidentally swing over their head. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've done it. <laughs> it is deeply, deeply dissatisfying. It's It's got to be one frame, but it's that one frame that hurts so bad. So we're seeing a lot of a lot of upper swing mileage here, uh, taking out these enemies in less attacks, so going a lot faster. Um, unfortunately there's still a lot of enemies coming, which is just really 
real bummer. RNG. Hopefully, hopefully it'll 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 fix up eventually. That's yeah, well, uh, the next area is going to be the the super fun desert of death, which is all random encounters all the time. Oh yeah, that one area. That's really bad. I'm going to heal again. Yeah. Four bases. It's the cheapest it's ever going to be, so I might as well do it now. Yep, I think it goes all the way up to 12 in the final town. Yes, it's 12 um, in the final town. Very good. You might as well die at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a bridge right nearby. You can just go get wrecked by death adder shooters on the bridge. So now that we have a crystal from that tower, uh, we can summon a giant turtle. It doesn't necessarily make sense, but, you know, here we are on the back of the giant turtle. Uh, there are houses here. I don't know who's living in them. Fun fact, not the last time we're going to end up on a giant uh, animal here. Yeah, yeah. There will be some more of that again later. It's good stuff. This is... I'm really curious about the ecology of this turtle. Like, there's a lot of huts. There's dragons. I mean, the fish make sense, and I guess the eagles are flying by. But... Fly yeah, I guess they're flying by. That makes sense. Why are they dropping coconuts or whatever? That's the women one. <laughs> They have one woman warrior keeping the town safe. Yeah, considering how many random encounters there are in the Desert of Death, uh, she is rocking it. Like, she's gotta be just cleaning up shop with all the skeletons. Speaking of skeletons... Is that our first uh, skeleton? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Uh, usually you run into them on the bridges. I might have missed one earlier, but I don't think that was first one this run. Now it's time to head out into this wonderful desert. We're already starting with the encounters. Um, jump swing that was just earned in that last town is kind of useless. There's a couple spots where it can come in handy. I don't know that it's super necessary. That hitbox. Yeah, the skeletons. Um, I mean, the skeletons are about as well dressed as anyone else because everyone else is just wearing strips of leather. <laughs> They've at least got a hat on. It's true. Uh, the hitbox is not random. It actually changes based on what frame of the animation the enemy is in. So if you can time it just right, uh, you can manage to get the enemies at the right time. And uh, hit their hitbox, but it is, I think, a matter of a couple of games. Um, Skeleton seems to have a bigger hitbox, probably because his attack is a lot bigger and meaner. Is, yeah, is, 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 is Axe's <laughs> uh, hitbox, is Axe's hitbox change also based on what animation I'm doing? I don't actually know You that. know what? I don't know. Um, oh my god. Thing, I usually walk all the way into whatever is hitting me. <laughs> there's there's not a lot of... Oh, that shouldn't have hit me. It's, it's pretty clear that I just, you know, completely eat it. Yeah, it, it would be great to grind um, if there was any use. Oh yeah, bad bra. These guys are the best. That was the bad bras. So, we're coming into the pyramid. Uh, pyramid's interesting because... You can go through the pyramid, um, which is a terrible idea. There's enemies that only get encountered uh, if you go through it, actually. You saw one right there with the little scorpion guy. Yep, scorpion, and there are also birds that swoop down. Oh, it's an absolute nightmare. Um, but if you go through, nothing happens. Yeah, everyone's got magic bases, so they can go stay at the end, I guess. That skeleton needs a nice place to sleep for the night. <laughs> Um, so, that key in the pyramid, uh, it's interesting because it sort of leads you up there anyway, which takes you out significantly faster, uh, and is the required item to get through the next area. Uh, there is a gate that would be closed. There is zero indication there's a gate there. So, uh, if you've already got the key, you wouldn't necessarily even know about the gate. So, this bad bra... Uh, unlocks probably the best non-required skill in the game. Super swing. 
Super Swing. Uh, super Swing's good stuff. It has a way better hitbox than Upper Swing. It does as much damage as Upper Swing, and it's basically the bread and butter of combat in this game from this point on. It's mostly what you're gonna see for the rest of the game, yeah. Oh yeah, for the um, record, for the record, my 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 record for encounters is I I got an encounter in one of my PBs. I got an encounter in se on seven straight steps in that in that <laughs> desert. So to give you an idea of how bad the RNG can get. Yeah, it's the I guess that's something I kind of appreciate about this run is that um, I mean like that's absolutely horrific. And there's just no no good that can come of that but uh there's definitely some like interesting on the fly calls to be made about when to take a death war versus when to try to get some more encounters versus when to save up bases or use them or... so that first skull is so especially difficult to time i feel like because the game lags out sometimes mm -hmm. yeah this area there's a lot of enemies the Spiders are throwing so many things out. There's tons of sprites on screen and hitboxes to check, so a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we get to see some pink Amy Rose hedgehogs here. Sonic. Hey Sonic. Say hi to Sonic. <laughs> I guess it's Amy. Alright. So uh, there are I think one of my favorite like obstacles in the game has got to be those arrows that are traveling. Like, how do they stay in the air? Flashing light warning coming up right here. Oh, yeah. Keep going. So this is a new strat I came up with yesterday. So I switched to lightning. And lightning one-shots um, one the hedgehogs. And so I don't have to do oh, that nice. twice. There you go. And if I use fire, which is worth eight, then it one-shots everything. Because it actually it delivers three hits, basically. Oh, my God. Oh, and it takes out that... that uh... That the spider up. horrible spider, yeah. I missed the jump uh, there. That jump, um, the last time we were, we were doing this together, you mentioned there is a really vicious uh, exact same jump at the very end of the game. It's the last jump of the game, yeah. <laughs> it's just not cool. All in all, that went pretty well, though. I'm pretty happy with that, uh, that spider cave. Yeah. Yeah, encounter rate in this game seems to primarily be based on what tiles you're on. Uh, so forests are pretty bad, deserts are truly terrible, paths are pretty light, um, grass is reasonable. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think I think grass and paths are the are the two best ones, and the two worst ones are mountain and uh, mountain and desert. That's purely based on nothing but empirical evidence, honestly. <laughs> I. Yeah, someday I will I will get it together and dig into the source of this game, but that's that's an undertaking. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a problem for another day. Yep. So here comes the uh, next required movement tech that lets you uh, progress through areas. Oh, also knights knights are the best, uh, <laughs> like master chief, and they will never ever hit you unless you walk into it, which is just chef kiss. It's beautiful. There is no uh, one here. Uh, oh. So the compass that is received from this wounded soldier is extremely important. Uh, there's an upcoming maze forest that it, honestly, like, it's so weird to call it a maze forest because there's no maze aspect to it as far as progressing through the level. Uh, the maze comes in that if you don't have a compass, you can't find your way through and you get warped back to the start which is just really, really mean. So it walled me when I played this as a kid. Yeah, uh, this maze forest uh, has a piece of fruit on the other side, which is, like all items, very, very important. Because you can't get fruit anywhere else in this world, I guess. <laughs> Need more vitamin C. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, bars, they're the best. Uh, so, the forest is honestly, I, I think, one of the scariest areas in the game. It's my least uh, favorite, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of things coming at you. There's things that deal two bars of, or, sorry, a full bar of damage. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of scary stuff here. Ooh, I killed that, yeah, I killed that wolf. Oh, nice, nice. This is getting close to the end, but even here, it's still 
It's still pretty scary. A lot of stuff coming on. That went unreasonably well. No. Yeah, that... <laughs> so unfortunately, uh... You did a little too well here, and now you have a ton of bars of health. And... Oh, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm betting on my, my, my RNG being as good as it has been this whole run so far. <laughs> And that is bearing out 100%. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the... Oh, wow. Oh my Just... god. I'm actually out of health now. So... I mean... I guess that also worked too well. <laughs> it was perfect. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so yeah. There's a, there's a piece of fruit at this conspicuous tree. Uh, this game, it really mixes in the, the fighting game, the side-scroller, the RPG elements all over. Um, as a kid, it made for a really interesting experience, because there's just so many genres being thrown in your face. So each enemy, has, or each area, sorry, has, I believe, three or four enemies available. Um, yeah, it's either three or four, depending on which area. Yeah. So, sadly, next area we go to, we lose the bad bras, or our time with them is already over. We need to stream at Death Adder Juniors, which is... They're awful. I guess a good trade? That's not a good trade. It's a very, it's, it's a very bad trade. <laughs> and also uh, the skeletons they, and the knights get beefed up as well. They come Neo. Yep. I actually like the Neo skeletons better than the regular skeletons. I feel like their, their hitbox is a little easier to abuse. Yeah, I agree with that just the way they attack. Um, so, I guess it's worth talking about the big, big difference between any percent and 100 percent. Um, any percent, you can completely skip the last town. Uh, that is incredibly marathon unsafe, because if you die at any point after where we're at right now, you get sent all the way back to the town you were just in. And that's, that's not good. That's not where where there's, you want to go. There's three dungeons, basically, you have to go. Yep. Uh, so, the 100% category takes you to the last town, which gives you a, a safe point to continue from, which is really nice. Uh, and, because you collect all items, uh, there is an item that makes the Death Adder Juniors a lot less scary. They are a one-hit kill, um, unless you have that item, in which case they are a regular enemy that deals a half bar of damage. So that was that was the one required use of tackle I just did. I don't know if you yep. explained tackle, but tackle is basically you run and then you tackle. Which yeah, really the uh, the run from tackle gets used again a little bit later, um, but tackle oh, yeah, is, true. is required again at all. Yeah, the the waterfall, the the little snow at the end of the next section. Yeah. So yeah, without without the fruit, that that eagle does not appear, and we're kind of just <laughs> yeah. You just exit out of the mountain and are standing there again. Um, so theoretically, we're on a different eagle now because uh, it's really, really, really huge, and that eagle seems pretty small. So I guess the little eagles hang out with the giant eagle. It's not really clear. It's it's a fantasy setting. Don't think about it too it's hard. Fine. These chicken legs, nice big eagle face. All right, no dadders, let's go. Ooh, that was good RNG. Oh, very good RNG. All right, cool. Wow, that's yeah. Um, it's a, this is pretty ideal right here. Uh, not encountering a death adder junior. So I, I guess it's worth. Uh, mentioning again the holding down a button and tapping the other button to get through text as quickly as possible because you get two text boxes after every single victory uh it's it's important it adds up a lot so yeah so this is our this is our last power up that we're getting it's enti it's entirely useless i get that yeah. so i it wanted to give super cool I'm gonna actually lose here. Oh, all right. well you're gonna get your see here so what we lost so the uh the guy calls us a worthless chunk and if you and if you say no to him, he calls you a wuss. <laughs> so, <that's very> good. <laughs> oh wow! Actually, I've messed. I, I I've actually been gotten really good at this. This is like a really risky uh, batter strat that I've been doing. Um, 
Yeah, I, when I play, I typically tackle Death Adders, which is a lot slower. Yeah, because um, it's, eight, it's eight to tackles to full yeah. swing. But it, it's generally pretty safe, whereas uh, with this strat, you gotta... Oh no, I guess he can't take it. So your hitbox is just big enough to, to take him. So it's mainly that first attack that's really big first. Yeah, the, the fire attack, and uh, if you jump too far on that jump swing, mm -hmm. uh, he can hit you. And if you time your... If you time your super swing wrong, he'll also he'll come to you as well. So it's, it is pretty risky. Yeah, but the but the savings. So uh, ideally, from here we want to see as few encounters as possible, uh, and all neo barbarians all the time. I say, and not use more fights. But all neo barbarians, though. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You'll take it. I'll take that. Have you, have you ever experienced where the Neo Knight hits you after you hit him? Um, I've had that happen to me a couple times, and so I yeah. kind of take it kind of safe whenever I fight them. I tend to be pretty safe with them. Um, so I used to have a really, really bad habit of jumping towards the Neo Skeletons after I beat them. <laughs> Every once in a while, they will attack as they're collapsing on the ground, which will hit you, and you lose the fight anyway. <laughs> There's an axe. Know. There's an axe. You can see Death Adder Jr. is using an axe. It's a golden axe, even. Mm -hmm. Which, like, I guess from a lore perspective, he's Death Adder himself is minting a bunch of spare golden axes back at the, the giant castle. I assume they're miniature golden axes. Here's a Neo Skeleton. Nice. Yeah, gotta love, gotta love that Neo Golden Skeleton. Or Neo Skeleton. A nice pink palette. So, the Neo Skeleton, uh, unlike Axe Battler, is using the super cool jump attack that was earned in the last battle that is largely useless. It looks so cool, but There it is, there it is. I tried to, I tried to show it off there. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't do any extra damage, and it puts you right on top of the enemy, which is just. Why would that be the final special attack that you play? It's such a weird call. It's links. It's links down stab. They want we. This game desperately wants to be done too. <laughs> desperately. I mean, it's got twice the power of Zelda two, so there you go. It's got that going for it. It's true. Superior game, clearly. <laughs> uh, so it's like when I said uh, Sylvan Tail on the Game Gear was superior to Link to the Past because you start the game with the ability to dash. Sylvan Tail is fun. Though. It is really good. I'm the game around that age of the years. Check that one out. Uh, no, so those, those are uh, Death Adder Juniors. Oh, also this area, flashing light warning coming up. Sorry. Sorry. We're really bad about this. So Death Adder Senior is the is the is the final boss of the game now. This jump. <laughs> yeah, more. in the Japanese version. It uh, specifically points out that the uh, Death Adders are Death Adder Junior. There's an actual, like, one tile JR at the end of their name. Um, so there's no room in the American version? I don't think so. Um, but the fact that they're coming at you, it's one of those, like, is Death Adder just hanging out, wandering around? So that, that segment right there is super scary. Uh, the area it drops you to down below is, is horrifying, and it does a lot of damage, and then you have to do it and then heal back. There's a, uh, there's a moonwalking pikeman there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he will ruin your day, because he has a really weird hitbox. Yep, full bar of damage. Just... We're, we're safe epilepsy-wise now. There's, there are no more flashing lights. We no longer use magic at all, at all on the run. So, you, could, you guys are good to... You can, you can turn back now. Yeah, so, man, I love the tiles for that final castle. What an intense place. Alright, that was good RNG heading in, at least. Yeah, that's a very reasonable amount of encounters. So, yeah, final dungeon. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got retracting spikes in the ground. We've got invisible door maze. It's, uh, it's a disaster. 
every, every surface is sharp. Um, you have to take doors that don't appear until you stand on them. But don't worry, because some of them show up out of nowhere and try to send you to the wrong area. There's also one in mid-air coming up here, which is real good. Oh, yeah, yeah. You gotta be in. And that one, I feel like it's one or two pixels as like far the, as the right position. It's like on the right side of the platform or something. I have to concentrate this, right? Yep. The so, the cloud area is very terrifying. Um, you fall all the way back to the start. If it goes wrong, you have to tap over to the side, but not accidentally run. Um, yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Ever, being ever so slightly in correct positioning would will knock you straight off. So that's probably the scariest point in the whole game. I agree. Um, with that. From here, it's just progression up to the end. Yeah, so I guess the the spikes on every surface is slightly misleading because you can stand on the corners of most of these, which is just so silly to me. No. Oh, wow. oh, I made it. Wow, incredible. Here's the here's the one in midair right here. Yep, right after the weird through the floor waterfall scan. <laughs> This is a disaster. Imagine playing this blind. Oh, oh. It's it's been so long since I have. I don't want to think about it. Like I was young, I stuck it out. I developed nostalgia so I could come back and play it later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've reached the end of the dungeon. Time for the final boss. Oops, I missed the jump. Right. There it is. We made the jump. All right, final boss time. Nah, that's time. Ah, uh, yeah. just a cutscene. Spoilers. No, no final boss. The final boss is text. Yeah, this game, <clears throat> this game's really, really hard casually, and also the speed run. Uh, in terms of like the movement, getting used to the movement, especially physically on a Game Gear with that loose Game Gear D pad, has actually been a uh, really. It's been a real, I say, a fun challenge. This is a game from my childhood, um, so I really, uh, I really enjoyed learning this run. I used. I used your run mostly um, back when the world record was like a 28 or something like that. That was sort of where I based a lot of that. But um... yeah, for anyone looking to run this, it's not super long. It's a fun, weird run. Um, if you are nice and consistent, the game is kind to you. Uh, yeah, no, no, no boss. It's great. There's no boss. Yeah, the RNG is a little bit rough. Like that. That was. This was pretty catastrophic RNG because I didn't. I didn't take a death. I took no deaths, and I still didn't get a sub thirty. Um, your, your gameplay was really solid. Yeah, it, it was I'm really happy super with that. smooth run. But you got devastated by random encounters. That was wild. Yeah, people are are, are noting that. Uh, that the uh, the scrolling text sounds like uh, a ringing phone, which you don't hear during the run because I can control the speed of it, and so it actually goes much faster than that. He split the darkness into my favorite line in the whole game. Yep. And then you get this cute little unique sprite here at the end uh, that you ride around on. It was very, very good. We're gonna... And oh, this, this ending track is so good. It, it's worth it. Yeah, there's a lot of really good music in this game. There's a lot. This game actually does have a lot going for it. It is a Game Boy, a Game Boy. It's a Game Gear exclusive, which is kind of the downside. Um, I happen to love the Game Gear. I know you happen to love the Game Gear as well, but it, it's not really easily. Still, no axe. We, 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 we. You have to, you have to use your imagination. We got the axe. We, we recovered it, yeah, and it's safe forever. It's going back to the king, so he can hide it better this time, probably. I don't buy it. There's your, uh, there's your. There's your unique sprite and the uh, flying on the eagle. Mm. It's a great game. I, I do really love this game. Um, thank you so much for... Uh, you, we, I, I've done a couple of these uh, marathon runs in the last week or so, and Jay Question Mark was uh, available to do commentary on both, so which is really... Which was, uh, it was really great. I'm, I'm really glad uh, we got to do this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for having me on to talk about this game. It's... Uh... While playing it, it's very hard to talk a lot of the time, so getting to just watch and, and chat with you about it uh, when you have the free bandwidth is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, this was great. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Retrothon for having me on for this many runs. 
Um, so Retrothon was the very first marathon I ever did a run at. I, uh, I did a run of Barbie in, in, uh, in 2018, Retrothon 2018. It's still the best run of Barbie I've ever done in a marathon. Um, and, uh, and honestly, it, uh, it, I've done like two GDQ runs now and it really helped my confidence as a speedrunner. And so I owe a lot of my speedrunning career to RGL and to Retrothon. And uh, I'm happy that I can help out uh, behind the scenes a little bit with Retrothon uh, now. And uh, so yeah, thanks, uh, thanks RGL, y'all rock. Especially the people, the organizers, Ant and, and Kavik and those guys and Shima. Uh, you guys rock. Um, enjoy the rest of Game Gear Block. Um, it's uh, this next game that Pete is gonna is gonna show off is. Uh, mm. Have you ever wondered what Panzer Dragoon would be like if it were terrible? <laughs> well, you're all about to find out. This game is not to be missed. I love this game. Um, oh, no. so, so yeah, enjoy the rest of the marathon. Enjoy the rest of Game Gear Block. There, tomorrow there's a Turbo Graphics 16 block that looks lit. I'm really excited for that too. So uh, have a great rest of the marathon, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, good night. I'll, I'll be in chat. Agora, o primeiro. E Hiroayo Proto.